is our tournament bracket. Purdue, Michigan after this one. Minnesota, Michigan State. Maryland, Northwestern, Wisconsin, Indiana in the quarterfinal games later tonight. Hi, everybody. Dave Fleming along with Dan Dockett. Yesterday, in a lot of ways, Dan was about bubble teams, Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, whatever. Today's about winning this Big Ten tournament title. Yeah, and Michigan's mentality is the key. I was shocked, really, how well they played yesterday. There's no precedent for what they did. Now, today, you've got to bounce back and do the same thing because you're playing the champs. Purdue, the big front line, Swanigan and Haas. Michigan handled them really well the first time. But today's a different deal. But the Michigan mentality was awesome yesterday. They're going to have to bring it today. I mean, you don't want to downplay what happened and minimize the impact of a true plane crash on Wednesday. But now it's almost like it has become a rallying point for a group of kids that just look totally engaged. I thought yesterday I, I sat by the end of the bench when Michigan came out because, quite frankly, I wanted to hug my son. And I have never seen the Michigan kids so energetic coming onto the court for pregame one. I've never seen it. And they played that way. They're going to have to play it today because Purdue's really good. I think you could make the argument with the way these two are playing that these could be the favorites in this tournament right now, matched up here in the quarterfinals. You know what's great about this day? Yesterday, not so much. You know, we had some blowouts. But today, every team left has a resume that says they can win this thing. Zach Irvin, offensive rebound. D.J. Wilson, first bucket for Michigan. Good action by Michigan. Nice cut by Irvin. Wasn't able to get it. But D.J. Wilson, two keys for Michigan. D.J. Wilson and Abdul Rahman. When Rahman makes shots, he energizes Michigan. I was talking to a number of their players. And right there, D.J. Wilson on Matthias. So that's an interesting matchup. Wagner's going to have his hands full down low with Caleb Swanigan. Purdue runs great motion, and when you watch it, they try to run it high above the free throw line. What that does is that eliminates any type of help for Swanigan, gives him one-on-one, -on -one, and he's just too big and strong. And you saw that look from Swanigan after that first bucket. Walton finds Wagner, who's a good outside shooter. He missed badly, though, on that one. I think he rushed that a little bit. I, I, if he would have shot fake, he'd have gone around Swanigan. He did not play great yesterday. Swanigan underneath goes right by him. Going to his left shoulder. He's just whipping Wagner. He's getting great position. And then Wagner, for whatever the reason, is getting way too high. John Beeline's going to get the nail in. I think Swanigan took it personally. He probably had his worst game of the year yeah. in Ann Arbor. Defensively, he was off. He couldn't get from one spot to the other very well. Good pass. Irvin down low. Wilson. That's pretty good. That's two times that Zach Irvin has cut into the middle of the Purdue defense, and something good has happened. Zach Irvin might have played his best game yesterday against Illinois. I thought he was tremendous. Yes, he was. And again, like Abdul Rahman, when he's making shots, it's a whole different deal. Irvin has struggled a little bit, but really good moving without the ball thus far. Here goes Swanigan again. A double team came to help out, and Wagner gets on the loose ball. That was a great play by Derek Walton, who got hit in the face. Sort of shaking out the cobwebs as he brings the ball up the court. They like DJ Wilson no matter what the matchup is. And why not? Shoots right over top Thompson. Yeah, he shouldn't have done that. Should have gone to his left hand into the middle and gone over Thompson. He, he made it easy for the much shorter PJ Thompson. Edwards gets fouled by Wagner. Well, if you're going to come in on Biggie, 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 you're going to get hit. Oh, right there, as Swanigan went for the ball, you see his hand reach back and caught him. You know what I love about Swanigan? He's all day. Like, he is not, hey, I made a couple shots, so I'm going to get out, play outside. He is all day on the block. Dakota Mathias misses, but Edwards with the offensive board. Thompson wide open three. Irvin rips it away. And Irvin made a great move to block out Vince Edwards. Well, Derek Walton, the guy you've been talking about who has the ball, has there been a better player over the, the home stretch of Big Ten play? Are we going opposite day again? A rare turnover. <laughs> we had that yesterday. We don't want that again. Oh. Out of bounds. And there's the head coach of the Boilermakers. Did a really good job this year. Matt Painter, who has a 9-10 and 10 Big Ten tournament record. They won the championship back in 2009. Got to the final with a lot of these players last year. If you ever see where Matt Painter is coming up on an interview on a radio show or a TV show, listen, because he is one of the great basketball explainers, totally honest, unafraid to tell you what's real. Great guy. Shot clock 
winding down Michigan will often take a lot of that shot clock and then they get a good look. Irvin really comfortable going to his right. When Irvin can get to the elbow, he is deadly. He has been shooting the ball bad, but that's his sweet spot. Swanigan with Dinell, and that was not a great entry pass. It goes off of Swanigan, out of bounds. Well, Abdul Rahman came over. John Beeline, you see, they're one of the great coaches, one of the great guys in basketball. Well, and this week has demonstrated oh. that. The way that he handled the plane crash on Wednesday where his kids were spooked, and rightfully so. I mean, it was extremely scary for everybody involved. The calming influence. I, I, John did a great job with what happened to this Wolverines team. I had a chance to talk to him. You know who else he said did a great job? Number 34, Mark Dinell. He said Mark Dinell immediately opened up the emergency doors, got everybody out. Thompson on the break. Thompson blocked. And Walton got a hand on it. Here comes Michigan. Three on two. Abdul Rahman. Wilson with the foul. This totally different Michigan team since the Michigan State game. Nine games. Derek Walton's been the catalyst, but he has made everybody come to his level of toughness, hard playing, enthusiasm. Edwards for three. He's key right there. He plays well in big games. He had 25 against Northwestern, 24 on the road at Indiana. He gets overshadowed with the Purdue big guys. He's one of the better players in the league. Versatile. He does everything. Guard all positions, rebounds, post up bad, uh, bad matchups. Walton and Nell here. Yeah, help came from Swanigan. No panic with that shot clock down at five. Walton knows, though, he's got to get rid of it. He does. Almost got the soft touch. Michigan tracks down the loose ball. Walton tries again with a foul. Fouled on a three. Derek Walton will be at the free throw line when we come back to Washington, D.C. Michigan with the early one-point lead. ESPN. Well, Dave, as you mentioned, Michigan had to wear their practice uniforms in yesterday's game, and Derek Walton Jr. was actually lobbying to wear them again today, saying we're playing loose and having fun, and it's 100% because we're wearing our practice uniforms. Walton said the entire plane incident made them appreciate their love of the game even more and showed the resiliency of this group, and Walton, one of the few people injured in that plane accident, he received five stitches in his right leg after the airplane door cut him while he was evacuating, but he was working off adrenaline yesterday, didn't even feel it. And uh, I think Michigan fans will hope, thank you, Molly, that the adrenaline is pumping again this afternoon because he is such a key player for this Wolverines team. Nine games, he's averaging 15 points. He's 63, 62 to 17 assists to turnovers, makes all his big free throws down the stretch. And more importantly than that, you want to be a great player, get outside yourself, expand yourself. And Derek Walton has expanded himself, meaning you'll see him on defense hitting the floor, clapping at people. And he's never done that before. He's never been the emotional guy, and he has become that over the last nine games. And his play has been, uh, it's been all Big Ten. I had him on my first team, all Big Ten team. He's been that good. I did too. He's been really good, though. Uh, you know it. Before that timeout, he was fouled shooting a three-pointer, so he got the three free throws, made them all. Caleb Swanigan, Wagner, who came out after the early minutes, back in. Swanigan trying to bully his way in, almost traveled. Isaac Haas in there at the same time. So you got the two big man lineup now for Purdue. They don't play a ton of minutes this way. Haas, who's just so tough to handle. And when he makes those shots, because he hasn't been making them, he had a ton of those against Michigan the first time. He, got, he left them on the front of the rim. He makes those, Michigan's got a problem. Big I mean, problem. It, it can kind of drive you crazy if you're watching Purdue because he just gets so many good looks when they don't go down. Wilson for three. There's Carson Edwards, very talented young player, freshman from Texas. Edwards a long two, good. Carson Edwards is the perfect guy for this Purdue team because he goes, gets his own shot. He's a little bit wild at times, which is perfect because nobody else is. So he'll go make something happen. Matt Painter told me, I don't worry about how he plays. I'm going to play him, take him out, put him back in regardless. I can't worry because if he plays poorly, it doesn't bother him. If he plays well, it doesn't bother him. He just plays. Oh, man, that will go right through his hands. But got it back. 
They're up by good defense from Purdue. Wagner's got to get rid of it. Goes to the basket and tried to dunk it, but missed. Pretty aggressive move. That was a great move. He does that about once a game, usually from the middle of the floor. He is a very athletic kid. Now he gets called for a personal, and John Beeline not happy about that. Second foul, that's big. You know, one of the things when you play Purdue, you are going to have to figure out the post first and foremost, and you're going to foul, but you can't foul sloppy, meaning you can't reach. If you're going to foul, it's got to be because you went chest to chest, hip to hip, and knocked the living you know what out of a guy. If you're going to reach, you got no chance. Yeah, that, that really hurts Michigan. Haas, immediate position, fouled on the floor before the shot. So no basket. Donnell called for the personal. Now, Champ Week continues tonight. And how about the semifinal matchup? We get to watch him go at it again. Always close, always entertaining. Carolina Duke, that's at 7 Eastern from Brooklyn. And then uh, Notre Dame, Florida State after that. Haas, too easy. Way too easy, Mark Donnell. You've got to make Haas go over you. You can't give him a around you type move. Haas looks ready. He hasn't made those. He's making them today. That is trouble with a big T for Michigan. And the Wolverines. Donnell shoots from the outside. Perfect. That's his best move. He has not made them this year. He's a 50% shooter on them. But he and DJ Wilson are going to get those shots. That's always been a bedrock of John Beeline's offense. The big guys have to be able to shoot from the outside. Pitts not good. West Virginia. It became a verb. <laughs> You're right. Swan again. There's a big guy who can shoot. And he looks like a focused, determined player of the year in the Big Ten. Well, we expect this is going to be a fun back and forth kind of game. Donnell almost the same spot just couldn't quite catch it cleanly Urban had it poked away got it back and a nice dish to Wilson right. uh, Michigan got lucky because the ball was back tapped from P.J. Thompson having to bounce off a Purdue player right back to Urban Urban made a good play P.J. Wilson's got eight of their 16 Thompson for three good I love P.J. Thompson. There are guys in this league that are good enough to get you fired. P.J. Thompson's good enough to win you a championship. Stays out of the way, feeds the post, makes big shots, talks, defends, perfect Purdue point guard. Walton, tough pull up. Good defense didn't matter. Man, that was great defense. It's not exactly what you draw up at a clinic to get your best player a jump shot, but man, it's a great game. It's a great game. Edwards trying to feed Haas. I don't think he was expecting the pass. I don't think Walton's going to slow down. Walton spun it in. And Walton went around P.J. Thompson and then beat Matthias into the air. And you were right. His head was down. He was low and he was going. I think that speaks to what you were talking about. This is just a different Derek Walton. That's a travel and a turnover. Well, you know what time it is. Dan mentioned clinic. It's time for the Dan Dockage on court hoops clinic. Go get in position, Dan. We'll have that when we come back to D.C. is once you have brought him a certain length and only you know that length because it's a feel then you go back to your shooter John Beeline and Matt Painter the guards in this game do this better than any they have an unbelievable feel for when to go to the rim or when to drop it back to a point a postman all right so let's take a look at an example of what Dan's talking about that's Derek Walton the Michigan point guard and Mark Donnell, the big man who is ready to go when Walton draws the defense. So I like it. Dan gets to go on court, put on a coaching clinic. I get to be the analyst for a minute and, uh, and do a little drawing on the Telestrator. And look, you're back already. How much fun is this? <laughs> That's it. I we, know, right? We have a good gig, don't we? It's a Here great gig. And our, our guy Josh with the camera and our friend Pam over here. It's a team effort. 
just a lot of fun. Josh, who blew out a hamstring in uh, day one of the Big Ten tournament. He's back to sort of 50 percent-ish. Michigan hanging with the top seed. These teams met once in the regular season, and Michigan beat them, and beat them pretty badly. Ended up 12, but it was 22. Simpson, the freshman, had it knocked away, and then he commits a personal foul. Well, that's a Michigan turnover, which is rare. Selection Sunday, we're just days away, 7 Eastern. And Bracketology, our special with Reese Davis, Jay Williams, Jay Billis, Dan Dockage, Seth Greenberg, Dickie V, and even more. Breaking down the brackets, 515 is when SVP and SportsCenter will sort of reveal the field as it's unveiled. So we got a lot of college hoops coverage, not just on Sunday, but all the way through the tournament for you. Our experts. Look, nobody watches more college hoops than we do. I'm not necessarily including myself in you that do. group, but I do. Oh, yeah, we know look, what we're talking about. It, it is going to be so much fun. The marathon's going to be unbelievable. We're going to have globe trotters involved. We're going to have a mess, and it's going to be awesome. Yeah, the marathon. You're going to be on the air at some unusual hours. I think I go eight to eleven, then eleven to three a.m. Three a.m. Yeah. I'm good at 3 a.m. I'm big at 3 a.m. We found that out last night. Isaac Haas got called for the personal <laughs> foul. <laughs> Irvin underneath the basket. I'm telling you, Danell's going to get another one, but Carson Edwards is doing a great job of not allowing himself to get screened. Hey, that's a freshman. He plays that kind of defense. There is Danell. Not that time. I coached Mark Danell for four years. You can tell when the ball comes off his hand. Sometimes it pops straight up, and when it does, he's usually short. When he snaps it more on the line, he makes it. Well, Spike Albrecht is in the game. He played, what, 115 career games in a Michigan uniform? Grad transfer, now a role player with Purdue. Haas. Got to figure it out. You, you've got to decide what you're going to do. And, and Moak Wagner is screaming at the nail not to let Haas go to his left shoulder. Well, Moe's got two fouls. And he may be on the bench for the rest of this half. Xavier Simpson. He started to play better, giving Michigan another option off the bench. Michigan felt like, look at this. Edwards just took it from Derek Walsh. When do you ever see that? Never. He just got lower and just, you said it, just took it from him. Edwards then got knocked to the ground. Man, that is a tough, strong, young kid. Perfect for that team. I'm telling you, you, you need one guy that can go get his own. The one guy that can go get his own is Swanigan, but it's on the block. Edwards is not afraid. He'll shoot it. He'll drive it. And if he plays bad, he doesn't worry about it. Well, Donnell's now got two personal fouls. And John Teske, who doesn't play many minutes, a freshman, will come into the game to try to handle Caleb Swanigan. Uh, didn't Coach Bielan told you Teske was great getting people off of the plane as well? He was another guy who just helped make sure everybody got off that plane on Wednesday afternoon. He's running around. Edwards challenged but scores anyway. He knows he's going to make shots. What happened with Edwards was they got a commitment Purdue did from C.J. Walker, a kid out of Indianapolis, and then for whatever the reason Walker went to Florida State, decided not to come. Matt Painter was looking around, saw this kid, thought he was a perfect fit, and he's right. He, he had to go out of Big Ten country to get him. Tosca Cedar, Texas, powerhouse basketball program. Edwards again with the steal. Edwards all the way. Edwards has dominated this game from the defensive end. Wow. He took it from Walden, took it right here. Carson Edwards, huge so far. And Michigan, a team that almost never turns it over, fewer than any team in the country. They've already got four of them, and that guy's been responsible. Can a car be crafted? Pat Riley's here. Is he? Uh, I don't know if they're going to win another championship this year, but playing some of the best ball in the NBA. Who knows? Taking a look at that kid. Do a little scouting. I would imagine that's why the boss is here. I, I would think so. I mean, a lot of guys, you send your scouts, but when the boss shows up, you know somebody's good. And that kid is good. Really good. Uh, Purdue not missing shots. Both teams shooting well. Michigan's turned the ball over more frequently than we're used to seeing. Simpson 
Found Abdul Rahman. Good look for three way off the mark. Yeah, Abdul Rahman and Wagner, two guys that have really important to Michigan making shots. Not even close. Four point lead for the top seed, the regular season champs. Trying to hit the Big Ten Player of the Year, Swan again. Got challenged and missed. Hey, that was great defense because it was a nice pass. DJ Wilson, you're trying to find who can guard the post. DJ Wilson might be the guy. When he catches Swan again down there, usually that is an automatic two. Well, the height of Wilson really affected. Now you got to look to go at Swan again here. You can't settle. Double team came, which is interesting. Usually leaves a shooter for a very good shooting team. What a swap. Edwards down low, great position, bucket. Swan again, I happen to watch him. He took it personal that DJ Wilson affected his shot, and I mean just bury, bury DJ Wilson under a bucket that time. Eight nothing run, and the biggest lead. Purdue's not even messing around, they're just switching everything. Simpson traveled, that's Swan again. The big guy trying to match up with the little guy. They did that in the second half of the first game. Uh, and they started switching in the second half. Watch Swanigan come here. Simpson thinks he's got a layup. This ain't high school people, and it's Swanigan. Look at him just burying, burying DJ Wilson. John Beeline is just hot, hot. And I think they called a technical foul against him. John Beeline did not like and has not liked the lack of calls against the offense in the post for Purdue. Like, he thinks that that play that we just showed was a foul on Swanigan. He thought an earlier play that Haas did in the post was a foul on Haas, and Beeline was adamant about that and didn't stop. Like, I saw him barking. I'm not sure which official it was, but he was barking the whole time. Vincent Edwards, the free throw shooter, missed the first. So they get one point out of that, and they'll keep the ball. Michigan, one of the most efficient offenses in the country. Look, the total numbers, because they don't play real fast, maybe won't blow you away. They're one of the most efficient offenses in college hoops. They've gone more than four minutes without a point. The switching of Purdue has really affected them. And when Simpson was in there, Klein did a great job of helping off of him, ignoring him, really, and getting something done in help side. It's Edwards on the low block. I say it all the time, transition defense is the most undertaught thing in college basketball, not at Purdue. Purdue is exceptionally good at it. Walton, three, got it. Man, he just waved off D.J. Wilson and kind of no-look Ryan Klein kind of lulled him to sleep. But well, Walton had a stretch before going to the bench of some rare misuse. Wilson almost traveled. He did. I and now traveled. I mean, twice. John beeline has got to be careful here. He already got one. They can't lose him. He needs to no. stay on the sideline. No, they can't. The assistants did a good job of getting in front. DJ Wilson wanted to outlet. It was a bit of a Chris Webber circa 1992 or 93. You're going to see right here. You want to outlet it? Uh, he dribbled, came down. Uh, he passed. definitely came down. Yeah. yeah. He did jump, but a little too late. That's seven turnovers for me. They averaged nine a game. They take care of the ball better than any team in the country, not today so and far. And they don't foul, and they've already fouled six times. Ryan Klein, good three-point shooter. Haas with the left hand and a foul. Too much. Too much, too big, great pass. When you're going high-low, you don't throw it to your man. You throw it away from the defense. Watch this pass. See Swanning and throws it to his right side away from DJ Wilson. And I got to tell you, 7 2, 3 million. That was a nice move to the left hand by Haas. 3 million, maybe just a slight exaggeration, but I think you're looking at the biggest dude in college hoops. You know, it may not be the heaviest or even the tallest, but just the most massive guy in college basketball. And might be the nicest. Congratulations to him, a thousand points. That's a good milestone. He's four for four in this game. 
He was 0 for 4 on those same shots, first time in Ann Arbor. Seven point lead for Purdue. Duncan Robinson not giving him any room. He's an excellent outside shooter. Irvin steps back off the side of the backboard. Klein threads one in there. That can't happen. And I'll tell you what can't happen. Swanigan cannot outrun you. Like, Irvin misses the shot and jogs. Swanigan sprinted. I'm telling you, there is nobody, and I do mean this, nobody that works harder before, after, during games than Caleb Swanigan. Has transformed his body and his basketball career. Wilson trying to use his quickness advantage. He did. That's the same foul. And I don't blame John Beeline and their staff for getting up. That's the same foul with the bump that they have called on Wilson just recently against Haas. Wilson and Walton have been the offense. That's it. Duncan Robinson, they're playing no catch on. I mean, he no help off Duncan Robinson, so he can't get a look. Thompson feeds Haas. And he traveled. Hey, Swanigan may beat you. He's a load up top, but he can't outrun you. You're going to see Caleb Swanigan right here. You've got guys already back. You can't let him run right past you. Swanigan sprinting. Irvin, Abdul Rahman jogging. The sprinter always wins. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you. And they've improved defensively. You know, we've been on the bandwagon, too. You see that Michigan team round of 32. It could be trouble, guys. Mm -hmm. I, I totally agree, Reese. I, mean, I, I think if you're one of the you know, one seed, a two seed, whatever, we don't know exactly where Michigan's going to be slotted in. That is not the team you want to see on the first weekend. Well, I agree. They're, they're capable of one of those 11 for 18 three-point nights, and they do it from a lot of guys. But as Jay Williams just said, the defense has been spectacular. They have stayed with the scouting report, meaning the guys you're supposed to not help off of, they haven't. And the guys you are, they've done a good job being in the right position off of help. Wilson, spin move. Wilson, what a first half for him. That's where they spread the court and get the Mo Wagner, now DJ Wilson, room in the middle to drive the big, and both are so skilled. And it's a great move out of a timeout by John Beeline. Swanigan over the top, Haas. Help came, but Haas just, it was like a fly on an elephant's back. He just swatted it away. You've you got to be in help early. You can't be in help late. You have to be preventative, not reactive. Like, I saw Abdul Rahman coming, but it was way too late. You have to take that away with your help, not be there after he gets the ball. Here's Wilson. Is he feeling it or what? And that's the shot because there is no way Haas can play a ball screen and get back to a shooter. Donnell hit one, now Wilson. He's got 15 points in the first half. I'll tell you what, Pat Riley may be here to see him. He's the guy, I bet you, who's standing out to one of the all-time great evaluators in Hoops history. Haas down low. Maybe this guy's standing out, too. Wilson got a piece of it, though. Well, Wilson got buried, but you know what he did? He kept fighting. You cannot stop. You got to make that. Maybe the miss off the side of the backboard spooked him a little bit. I've never known Zach Irvin to pass up a shot. Roll Just beat him. Roll How about DJ Wilson? Stand up and take note, Pat. Come on. Yeah, write that down. <laughs> yeah. Woo! You drilled that. Nailed it. Yeah? It's probably enough for tonight. State Farm knows that for every one of those moments, there's one of these. Whoa, you drilled that? Now it did. <laughs> Talk to an agent for help combining your home and auto into a plan that's right for you. That's probably enough for today. Here to help life go right. State Farm. Walton and Wilson for Michigan combined for 28. DJ Wilson's got their last 10. Well, the name Kevin Pitsnoggle, forever in the lore of NCAA basketball, played for John Beeline as a shooting four slash five, and that guy right there carrying out a tradition. Wow. 
He's, he's playing here. defense, too. I'll tell you what. I think he's battling so hard defensively and being so tough, it just lends itself to making buckets. Wilson recovered, and I think he stripped that ball away. I think Walton got it, or did Wilson? After a rock by blocked by Edwards, but they call a foul. That was because of the technical. I'm telling you, John Beeline went off, and now all of a sudden, what has happened? Two times, he's gotten a little body, and he's gotten the call. Now, this is a foul, there's no question. Yeah, that's a foul. I mean, he got the ball, but you can't hip check the guy into the stadium. You think that was a hip check? I do. Big life, big stage, big 10. Tough guy league. Tough men league, including the announcers. All right, let's see. Who's right, who's wrong? Fleming or Doctor? I have been wrong so much. No foul there. No foul there. And there's no touch. No touch, you don't think? Uh, maybe a hip check was a little strong. I'm not going to be wrong today. Right, I'm fine. having a heck of a day today. Right, I, am not, I was wrong a lot yesterday, not today. I'm seven for eight so far, though. Eight nothing run, Michigan back ahead. With so many big guys in foul trouble, there's a steal. Abdul Rahman went from behind. Walton had it stripped away, and it's off of Walton. What a play by Ryan Klein. We talk about it all the time. The transition defense is fantastic for Purdue because they don't let the ball get past you. Right there, Walton just loses the basketball. But Ryan Klein made Derek Walton get off balance by not letting the ball get past him. There is not a sport alive where the ball being thrown or getting past the defender is any good for the defense. Thompson cut off. Lonigan wanted it back, but Thompson took the shot. And DJ Wilson playing the game. He is going to a lot of different spots, and then he comes up with the rebound. Man. So he got fouled. This is the first game of the day here in D.C., the Big Ten Tournament. Dan and I will stick around and have Minnesota-Michigan State when we're done here about a half hour later. Also right here on ESPN. That promises to be a really good one. Hey, Minnesota, down the stretch until the regular season finale, they were the hottest team in the Big Ten. I have here. no problem with Richard Pitino being the coach of the year. I'll tell you why. His team, and I talked to him earlier today, his team lost five in a row. He's like, look, we were about ready to die. Wilson, they keep letting him shoot. He finally missed one, but Duncan Robinson got the miss. Now he tries and hits. The old rebound dribbling out the three and drill the three. <laughs> Just like they drew it up. <laughs> What a run. What a game. Purdue now down four. They have taken control. Now it feels like the Big Ten tournament. You got to go one shot here if you're Michigan. The whole bench got up. John Beeline wants one shot. I would assume this will be a high ball screen between D.J. Wilson and Walton, or whoever the ball handler is, and look to go back to Wilson. Clock down to five. Walton, crossover, three, no good. Swan again. Can Purdue get a shot off? Thompson does. And it goes! Count it! What a half of college hoops. Fantastic. The crowd got going. Doesn't look good all the way. Definitely off in time. Oh, man. Perfect end. We got 20 more minutes of this. How much fun is this? P.J. Thompson shot that. He didn't throw it. He shot it. All right, let's send it over to Molly McGrath. Coach, D.J. Wilson with some momentum-changing plays, but then that just happened going into the half. How do you steal back that momentum? No, I, I mean, our guys are charged up right now. It's a great comeback by, by us because they're such a good team, and they're so good in the post. So, no, we're in, we're in good. I don't worry about any momentum from that play right now. Both teams have plenty of momentum. It's great college basketball. What happened with that technical foul? Well, I, do, we, I just had a disagreement. Uh, this is a very, very physical game, and when, and when your, one of your best big man gets a touch foul, uh, I, I think that those type of things 
things are tough to handle when it's such a physical game. So made a mistake, must have said the wrong thing. First one in a couple years. All right, thank you, Coach. Thank you, Molly. Well, what a game we've had so far. Michigan leads by one. What a moment of Champ Week here in D.C. It's his second one of the year, so hardly any reaction as the Purdue point guard uh, with a spectacular moment. Man, what a first half we had, and we expect more of the same. Oh, we do. Michigan got off to a decent start, but then Purdue took over, got up nine, and then, man, D.J. Wilson from the middle of the court just started dominating things, and Purdue got out-rebounded, which you would not think. Caleb Swanigan has two rebounds. It's 13 to 10 in rebounds. A lot of guys making shots, but man, oh man, Michigan's got to keep that up. Let's check in with Molly McGrath, who talked with Matt Painter. Yeah, that's right. Matt Painter stressed the importance of keeping his bigs involved, but he said it's really tough because they expose us when we go too big. He said DJ Wilson was able to take advantage of some of those mismatches on the perimeter. So he said they probably will go smaller more in this half to offset that. Good stuff from Matt Painter. And that's where D.J. Wilson took advantage. It started with Haas. Remember, he hit the three, and then he went down the lane and spun and made a lay. I mean, D.J. Wilson did everything you want. But for Michigan to win, Wagner and Abdul Rahman has got to get involved. Or Irvin, one of the three. Two, two of the three have to get involved here. Wagner, two quick fouls, did not score. Now defending Swanigan. Great dish to Edwards. Yeah, I don't know what D.J. Wilson was doing. He kind of just stopped playing defensively, and Edwards just went to the basket. So Purdue back in front. Could end up being one of those alert your friend games. Wagner with the left hand, no. Wilson kept it alive. And Wilson scores again. He's just dominant. He is. Like he's just bigger, longer, better. And that's saying something against Purdue. Well, I think Swanigan's the player of the year, but he is dominating. Caleb Swanigan, Haas, he's playing this end too. Edwards, that's a tough matchup for Edwards. Down low at least. You know what? You know what he's doing really well, DJ Wilson? He's keeping his hands up. He's not slapping down. He's got to get to him in the post. I mean, he's being guarded right now by PJ Thompson. They got to get him the ball. That's just my unofficial expert opinion. Now they've got Wagner. Yeah, I mean, at, at some point you got to take advantage of that, don't you? Abdul Rockman instead takes a very tough contested shot. That was as bad a possession as a John Beeline team will ever have. No movement, no organization, and obviously didn't take advantage of a mismatch. Edwards. That's the guy. He got messed up on D.J. Wilson. Just blew by him. D.J. Wilson had a little trouble start the second half playing defense against a quicker Edwards. So that's part of what Molly got from Coach Painter. Some adjustments for the Boilermakers. Abdur Rachman for three, in and out. Now he's better struck though. Remember in the first half, he missed bad. Wagner missed bad. Right now, Purdue has more pass. Edwards, again, going to go right by Wilson, but missed the shot. That time, Wilson continued moving with him and did not let the ball get past him. He passed up the three, Wilson did. Abdur Rachman with the left hand. Boy, that was nice. Abdur Rachman gave a great shot fake. I thought he was loading it up. Did Edwards and then Abdul Rahman went right by him. That's how you get a bucket from the three point line now. You see the ball go in, you make a nice drive, now you're comfortable shooting a three. Swanigan hits the deck. This is a quarterfinal. Does this feel like a championship game? Yeah, it's it's being played at that high of a level. Dakota Mathias, who's been almost invisible. He has been completely invisible. He's a guy that Michigan really focused on, and here again. You've got to look to D.J. Wilson on this mismatch. And Matthias was all Big Ten defensive team, but he showed some quick he hands there it. to poke it out of bounds. He's the defensive player of the year. I don't care what the media says. He was the best defender. He guarded the most spots. You are a part of the media, by the way. In the paint, Michigan. Hey, Michigan usually doesn't do that in the paint. Purdue almost always does that. Both teams shooting well. These are the two best three-point shooting teams by volume in the Big Ten. Michigan's aren't straight post-ups. You know, you, you've seen D.J. Wilson get a rebound and go right back up two different times. You see a drive and a dish, things of that nature. That's how they score in the paint. Walton didn't really use the screen. Now he's matched up with Swanigan. Shot clock starting to wind down. He goes by Swanigan. And the dish to Wilson, who gets fouled. Well, that was nice. You talk about patience. 
you know, there's a rule in basketball, offensive basketball. Hold the ball for a two count. Hold it for a two count. Something good will happen. That's what Walton did. He held it, read it, went low, went knee to knee. Yeah, well, and Swanigan was hurting. He got up, sort of bounced around, tried to walk it off. Wilson's a very good free throw shooter for a big man. Which, when you watch him shoot, doesn't surprise you. He's got a great stroke. Elbow under his wrist. Releases the ball with a snap. Kid's having a heck of a day in front of Pat Riley. But more importantly than that, in front of his teammates. I think Pat Riley, like, wrote down... Yelled at a scout. He didn't tell me about this guy. He wasn't even on my my <laughs> prep sheet. But maybe he was. Yeah, maybe he was. I think he's on the radar. Having a great afternoon. Michigan by two. Carson Edwards had some big moments for Purdue. Man, man, he just walked into the bucket and lifted up over Derek Walton, who was there, and then he wasn't. How like, often do you see a, a freshman little guy physically impose his will? That's kind of what he's been doing. That's exactly what he's been doing. Both hands. This isn't a great offense. No. Good crossover, though. Then he threw it out of bounds. It was deflected. So it's Michigan ball. I just think that Michigan did not need that half to end. Like they were rolling and then the half ends and now you've got to regroup and it has been very, very stagnant. You know, Walton way off the mark. Yeah, it, they, it, it's just tough. You go into halftime, you're on a roll. And it's not really the shot that was made. It's just, it's just the feel that you have. Swan again, draws a foul. That's number three against Wagner. Tough day for Mo Wagner. Michigan's got to get it going. Tie game 43 all. Warriors. Swanigan, three, yes! Oh, man. Swanigan got a call on it, my goodness. That resume screams All-American for Caleb Biggie Swanigan. Well, the first team, uh, all Big Ten team, Swanigan, Half, Jock, Trimble, and Mason, and Caleb Swanigan. Some of the best numbers that anybody has ever put up in the history of this conference. And, and he, you know, he, he works so hard every single night. He is the guy that you're going to double. He's the guy you're going to throw big guys at. Remember we did a game Maryland where between Tchaikovsky and Bender, they just, I mean, beat him up. Never flinched. Kept going, won the game at the end, double-double. So impressive. He doesn't react. He just balls. Swan again made both free throws. Purdue back up by two. I like this lineup for Purdue when they have Carson Edwards because Carson Edwards has shown a tremendous defensive presence, and they can switch between three or four guys. we got more than 15 minutes to go. We've already had 15 lead changes. And you're right, I think Purdue's best basketball today has been with the freshman Carson Edwards on the floor. Irvin against Matthias, who does play excellent defense. Yeah, he's really good. There's nothing you can do. Irvin's six foot seven. He just got to a spot and lifted up over with a touch. That's just his second basket. Matthias, no points. Brian Klein, no shots. Unusual. Matthias going to try to score for the first time. No. Swanigan got a hand on it. Maybe advantage Michigan here. Walton in transition. Three. In and out. I was with you. I was ready to say, got it. I, I, it was going down, I thought. <laughs> it looked dead on. I heard you ready to get. Yeah. I was ready. Yeah. Michigan ball. I, mean, I think John Beeline likes it when his team pushes tempo every once in a while. Take it out every time. John Beeline, early in the year, really complained that his team wasn't. They weren't running hard in transition. Wilson did everything but go in. That'll make you crazy. That'll make you crazy. Two great looks. Derek Walton had it halfway down, and then Wilson halfway down. Swanigan three, no. Edwards on the offensive glass. Blocked by Wilson. But look at Walton running. Two on one. Sprinting down the court, hits the floor hard. And they call an offensive foul. There is no better team in defensive transition than Purdue. The coat of a guy is sprinted back. Got in front of the rim right here. Outside the arc. I don't like the call, but I like the play by Matthias. I mean, it was great effort. I don't know, though. I'm with you. That's
that's a block, but hey, the kid gave great effort. I don't know, Dave. He was pretty square. Maybe so. That is a great play by Dakota Mathias. So you think about the last three shots, two threes that did everything would go in, and then you get a two-on-one. You figure that's an automatic bucket for Michigan. Remember that little sequence there. Got nothing. Haas back in. He had a big time first half. Danell pushed him. Before the shot. <laughs> Danell's like, hey, come on. It's two big guys just battling like crazy. Mark Danell's brother Andrew is a starting guard for the Los Angeles Rams. Played in Iowa. Mark's not afraid of contact, not afraid of big guys. What are we doing? Now, I'm, not, I'm not sure what Donnell's supposed to do. Swan again, making his way in there with the left hand. No. And Donnell, that was a tough guy rebound. Hey, what? It's hard. It's hard in there. Mark Donnell is tough on tough. His dad's tough. The whole family's tough. Mom was a volleyball player. Oh! Wilson tried to use some touch. Yeah, I thought he was going to throw that one down on the whole building. He should have. Thompson weaving his way through traffic. That was pretty nifty, but he missed the shot, and now a foul against Janelle again. And the Michigan people are just going to go nuts. Don't blame him. This is too good. I know he goes under him here, but this is a physical game. He went underneath him, I know, but these two guys are just battling. If they were playing on a street, they wouldn't call this a foul. Either one of them would. There's a little push. I'm telling you, either one would say, oh, let's play. That shot goes down for Edwards. They're going to look at it at a break and make sure that was a three, but that's how they count it now. He's the player of the game. Carson Edwards. I think he is. So Purdue back in front. Danell's going to get a three here. Boy, this is bad possession again. Standing around. Almost a turnover and a foul. Bailed him out a little bit. All right, the officials are going to check here momentarily, but what do we think? Was this a two or a three? Well, <laughs> Jeez. they signaled to the, you, you saw that, I right? Signal no, to the score, able to make sure. Uh, yeah, we can confirm that. We got to be a little bit better than that out here. New shot clock for the Wolverines. Wagner back in. Wilson for three. Short. Rebound Matthias. Yeah, so stagnant. You know, the one bad thing about making threes is sometimes you fall in love with the three. Edwards going to feed the post, but Wilson did not let him get it there. Then Wagner threw it away. Yeah, he did. He saw Walton open her, open down the floor. Haas, offensive rebound, fouled by Wilson. This game is getting more and more physical the longer it goes. Well, Michigan's getting frustrated. They got to stop that because I'm telling you, Haas is going nowhere. Like, you can foul him all you want, but he's going to stay in there. So the more frustrated you get, the better it is for Haas. Donnell's got four. Wagner's got three. Haas at the line. Almost hit the bottom side of the rim. It almost went under, yes. straight under the rim. Yes. He was lucky he got a piece of the rim. And he's usually a pretty good free throw shooter. Try that again, Isaac. Nope. Edwards tapped it, but out of bounds. Swan get in, Haas out. I don't think we're going to see many of those minutes with both guys on the floor at the same time. No, I don't, I don't think you are either. Um, one of the reasons that Matt doesn't do it constantly is because they turn it over too much. Now, they haven't really turned it over in this game, but in practice they do, and Matt doesn't quite trust it yet. Simpson, maybe just a couple minutes on the floor to give Walton a breather. Duncan Robinson. Urban tried to cross over against Swan again. Irvin, jumper, good. We're going to look at that one, too. That one was close. I think he was on the line there. Offensive foul, P.J. Thompson. 
So that goes down as a Purdue turnover. Thompson will come out, all bricked in. Abdul Rahman has played a really good floor game. Hasn't made much, but he's come up with most of the loose balls. Joe Thompson there got himself an offensive foul. They gave him a three. Okay, so now they call it a three. Wagner will go to the free throw line. He still has not made a shot, but he's going to get a chance to score a couple points. You know what? That kid is a tough kid. He's kind of happy-go-lucky, but underneath that is a tough dude. Took it right at Swanning, and this is awesome. 48 as the game has gotten tougher and more physical the shooting has gone down a little bit well two things have happened here and I, I, the defense from Michigan has stopped giving angles in the post and they have made Purdue's big shoot over them and then on the other side Michigan offensively has been very stagnant and if you're stagnant against Purdue like if you're stagnant against Purdue and you go side to side, they lock you up. What you have to go, do against Purdue is what Mo Wagner just did. You go north and south, you go right at their stance. It's always been that way against Purdue. Well, maybe the free throw line can get this super talented sophomore from Berlin, Germany going. I'm telling you, I went, I've gone to one practice in my life at Michigan, even though my sons are not go to practice, but I went to one last year in about September, and Spike Albrecht and my son said, you know, this kid's going to be a pro. Like, I'm like, well, where, in Germany? They're like, no, this kid's going to be an NBA player. And I thought they were insane. Now, I'm not so sure they were wrong. I mean, he looks like an NBA guy to me. He's having a tough tournament so far. Double team for Swanigan who passes out of it. And then Wilson recovered for the block. Still plenty of time on the shot clock. Swanigan again double teamed. Albrecht that time decided not to try it. Edwards attacks. They call a block. And they point to the line, the restricted arc line. And Michigan doesn't like it, but I believe he was in the arc. He was certainly set. That's number three against Wilson. Let's see. Oh, man. Oh, man. Close. Now remember in the Big Ten we have that provision late in again. It has to be last two minutes or last two minutes of overtime where that becomes a reviewable play. It's not reviewable. If, if that were reviewable, I mean, yeah, yeah the foot was on the line. So they would have, they got it right and that would have been confirmed. You know, I get on the official son, the DJ Carstensen, the big tall bald guy at the bottom of the screen is a fantastic official. Might be the best one we got in the Big Ten. I think so. And, one and, of them. And we have history, and it isn't good. But now we're great, and he is the best. He mentioned that to me, though. Did he? Yeah, that the history wasn't great. It wasn't great. But it is now. We're boys. It's a calmer chair over here on this side of the court. You have no idea. <laughs> you have no idea. And there's rules on what you say. Wagner. This isn't going to end well. No, good defense by Swanigan. They're going to call a push, though, on the floor. And maybe a reach in on Vincent Edwards. So that's the foul against Purdue. Well, we call it the six with Michael Smith and Javel Hill. Sports, music, movies, and more with style and personality. Weeknights at 6 Eastern Sports Center on ESPN. It's the six. This time of year, talking a lot of college hoops. And Javel went to Michigan State, thus the Michigan State. People by the great Bart Fox and legendary director Scott Johnson. The well, Spartans are playing next against Minnesota. Wagner got bailed out by Walt Edwards, has just been everywhere on defense. Walton missed, tip no good, whistle foul. And they're going to say shooting foul. Wagner will go to the line. Wagner exploded up in the air. I have not seen him jump like that. He got a running start. Biggie Swanigan cannot believe it. You're going to see the running start coming from the top of your key. Here he comes. Walton, great defense. <laughs> that is big life, big stage, big 10. Look at Swanigan. He knows that. Wait a second here. He's not used to that. He's used to grabbing it and going. 
I mean, that's the thing about Wagner. Maybe gets stereotyped a little that Euro game with the outside shooting, and he does have that. This guy's an explosive athlete. You saw him early trying to dunk over everybody. And right there. He's still got room to be bigger and stronger, but he's got a lot of lift and bounce. And he's got a lot of game. He does. The two points today does not demonstrate that. Yeah, you know, the great part of Fox just putting on, as we say, he has a lot of game, is 0 for 2. <laughs> Nothing. Uh, way to support us, truck. <laughs> two point lead, Michigan. Just about midway through the second half. Spike Albrecht, a runner. Swanigan, offensive oh, board, and it's stripped away. A great play by Zach Irvin. Edwards went for the steal. What a pass. Robinson way off the mark. He got excited. The whole bench got excited. The whole state of Michigan got excited. That shot usually goes down. Every time. Except that. Edwards posting up. Purdue likes this matchup, I think. They like it because Swanigan's opposite. Look at him go and get the offensive rebound here. Rebound who? It's loose. Michigan on the run again. And Edwards, his hands are everywhere. You know, he's like that football, that little bowling ball running back that sneaks through the line because he's lower. That's what he does defensively. Feels like a big possession. Both teams scuffling the score a little bit. Comes from behind and steals it away. Play John Beeline going nuts with Zach Irvin because he just lobbed it in there. Swanigan ran the floor. Offensive foul. <laughs> Who was it? Abdul Rahman. He has played a great floor game, Abdul Rahman has. He got down the floor, took the shot from Swanigan. Great look by Spike Albrecht. Swanigan where he wants to be. Well, that's tough right there. Yeah, I mean, you know, in theory, you got to give a guy room yes. to catch and make a maneuver. Absolutely. You got to give him a little bit of space. No space given. Michigan got the call, though. Nobody's made a shot in three minutes. The two teams that couldn't miss in the first half. Well, Abdul Rahman wants the ball back to go against Swanigan. So here he goes. Not as easy as it looks, fellas. Pretty good defense by Swanigan with the basket. Wow. Swanigan played great defense. But Abdul Rahman is one of those guys when he's 50 years old, he'll be making that move in some league. He can just get it in the bucket. Back and forth we go. Michigan's lead is four. Edwards, that was dangerous. Albrecht, three, against his old team, he hits a big shot, and he let him know. You know he's loving that, his dad Chucko. Loving that one. Hey, he's giving Purdue a nice little boost here. And he has played really well in the last three or four games. Terrific against Indiana on the floor. Good against Northwestern when he played with P.J. Thompson. And Purdue needed that one. It's been about five minutes without making a shot from the field. That's tough That's from Irvin. Look at our guy. Look at Abdul Rahman. Hustling everywhere. Got and they're going to call a foul. I think they are, aren't they? Yeah, there was a foul. I think it's on uh, Vincent Edwards. How about this? That's pretty sweet by Abdul Rahman. And then Spike from Crown Point, Indiana, by way of Michigan, sticks it to the Wolves. But yeah, this building has become electric. They, First time. they originally designed the city to be as impressive as possible to foreign dignitaries. They wanted the buildings, the architecture, the sight lines. They wanted America to look great for everybody who came here from abroad. I think they accomplished that goal. Man, you, you turn the corner and there's the Capitol. And wow. Sort of like seeing Isaac Haas standing right in front of you. You say, wow. <laughs> Molly, what you got? Well, Matt Painter trying to calm down his team in that timeout, telling them you can't let your emotions get the best of you. We had a couple things going against us. It's not a big deal. He just wants them to be tougher and not let their emotions control this game. Yeah, Molly, that's a great job because Spike, Swanigan, Carson Edwards, and Vince Edwards were all upset. And that is absolutely what Matt Painter should have done, did. That's why he's a great coach. 
Now let's see if Swanigan can get a ball to go through. It's been a while since Swanigan has made a shot. Talking about the Big Ten, perhaps national player of the year. That was good Wagner defense, better offense. Yeah, he went to his left shoulder. Remember early in the game, I told you Wagner was yelling at DJ Wilson not to let him go left. Wagner let him go left, paid for it. You know, it's really interesting in this game. What a pass. A little slice cut. That is a staple of John Beeline's offense. A little slice cut left to right off the high post. Should never get beat on that one. Look at Zach Irvin. Zach Irvin has changed his game. He has become really, really good defensively. Wow. Edwards for three. And to that bench goal. That's what we were just about to talk about is the kids off the bench for Purdue. Haas and Edwards and company have been tremendous. Well, think about here lately. Edwards with that three. Spike with the three prior. Big shots at massive times. Irvin three. The answer, no. Rebound Swanigan. Getting close to another double-double. Nobody's had more in the country. Just swarmed. Wagner almost stole it. Look out, DJ. Hopefully everybody's all right. Looked like his playing days. He took the charge. You know, that's a veteran. He took the charge, threw a shoe, and covered his head. Always cover your head. DJ. There goes the shoe. See, cover your head. Remember that, Pam. All right, let's get laced up again. And while we have a moment, you've been talking about the floor game. Some points now coming for a kid who's really played well aside from the scoring. Yeah, right here. This is just a little slice cut. You either chase it or you avoid the screen and go over. Carson Edwards, who has played a great game, didn't see the cut. Look how many steps Rachman, Abdul Rahman took before Carson Edwards reacted. That doesn't happen very often in a nifty pass. And finish. I love the one hand bounce pass when you thread it in there like that. It's good when it works. It's really good when it works. It'll make you put back things you never <laughs> stole when it doesn't. Well, Abdul Rahman, hey, he played great at the end of the regular season. Foul. Edwards all the way. Offensive foul. Same thing again in the last two minutes. They might look at that and see if anybody is in the yard. Man, this is a great play by D.J. Wilson. Great play. Oh, he's way outside the yard. Carson Edwards is playing harder than everybody. And when you play harder than everybody, great things happen. And that's another one he's of those sprinting coin day. flip calls. I mean, that was, that was a tremendous move by Edwards. So foul trouble now for Purdue. It's a great move by Edwards. It was. It's got to go here. Wagner three. Man, he has been so off from the outside. He popped it out of his hand. He didn't stroke it. He didn't snap it or release it. Not even close. The guy who could be so pure. Haas muscles his way in it and scores. I thought it was coming off the front like you did. You said it. Muscle. He backed, he backed Mo Wagner down under the basket. That's hard to defend. Nothing you can do. 33 of Purdue's 59 off the bench. Rockman found Wilson. What a pass! In and out. Wagner blocked off of Purdue. That's three in and out. Three of them. I mean, those are good. I think John Beeline. That's he. He loves that. That was great. He'll take that any day of the week. Wagner battling inside. Good no call right there. Yep. So Haas will check out. He's made a big impact in his minutes. He's been huge. Totally different than what he was in the first game at, at, in Ann Arbor when he missed all of those shots. Well, Wilson's been mostly quiet scoring-wise. Edwards, and that was not smart. Boy, he read it, though. Honest to goodness, he made a really good play to read it. He just got there a second late, a split second late, and fouled. So both of the Edwards now at four. Swanigan's got three. I mean, it was either one of those two. That's trouble for the Boilermakers. Well, because you're getting right now nothing out of Matthias, and you're getting nothing out of Klein. The two guys that would come in or should come in and replace that. Maybe you see Spike Albrecht. 
Yeah, if he's done chewing on his towel. A double bonus for Wagner, so he gets two. Painter's going with Clyde Haas. I got a feeling here you're going to see something out of Dakota Mathias. Just, Just the way this game sets up, you got to help on the post, and either he or Klein's going to get a good look. Mathias has not scored. Klein has not scored. Zero from those two. So what's Mathias 0 for 3 against Indiana? He had 17 in the first half and was unguardable. 12 ties, 17 lead changes. Want to get Haas back in? He got pushed. You know, you're better off pulling a chair out from under Haas because he is really backing in hard. And if you step away, he might fall back out of bounds. So there's the Michigan foul trouble. Four on Wagner, four on Donnell, three on DJ Wilson. Bonus time for Purdue. You can go offense, defense maybe here with Wagner. Or you go with Donnell, keep Wagner for the end. Missed the front end. Who got the rebound? Yeah, because, I'm telling you, DJ Wilson got it knocked out of his hands by Klein. And Abdul Rahman right there, great floor game. He's just been in the right spot. Every time. This is going to be a three for DJ Wilson if they can get the ball around. Abdul Rahman to the basket. Tipped it, tried to tip it to Irvin, but he tipped it out of bounds. He had DJ Wilson filling in behind him, didn't see him. All right, so this is the first quarterfinal game. The winner of this will play the winner of our next game coming up next right here on ESPN. Minnesota, Michigan State. That should be a really good one. Northwestern, the darlings of the Big Ten this year against the home team, Maryland, and then Wisconsin, Indiana. Hoosiers are getting close to being really in that conversation. They win tonight, and they are a threat to be in the tournament. There's no doubt. Haas dunks it. Wow. He's just backing folks down. That's all he's doing. He's just backing. This time it was Donnell. You've got to figure this out. You've got to step around him. Because if he's that deep, then they can't lob it to him. So when he wants to back you down, look, look how deep he is right now. You've got to try to step around. Easy to do from where I'm sitting. He overpowered Donnell. He overpowered the rim. I got dunked on him. Up and not when Carson Edwards has been fantastic. Absolutely terrific both ends. Well, Michigan is one of the better shooting teams in the country. They've missed their last five. Tells you one of two things. Okay, number one, they're cold. Number two, they're due. One of the two is going to happen. They're going to make three in a row or they're going to keep missing. One thing, I don't think they're going to hesitate. No, that's what I'm saying. That, that wasn't in the mix. And right now, they have spots guys that can knock him in DJ Wilson 18 in the first half only three since halftime Purdue's done a better job against him although he has had some shots that look like they were going Walton dangerous pass yeah that corner. was a set play a little baseline runner you gotta go to post here and Wilson against Clyde but the big guy going behind the back then spin then use glass that's the full package right there good matchup he didn't set him Settle for a little baseline jump shot. That time didn't settle. Almost poked away. Swanigan against Wilson. Didn't finish. Well, that was terrific by Zach Irvin. Zach Irvin played the top of the key. Didn't stand. Sprinted down. Rebound. Shot clock under 10 now. Crunch time in D.C. Walton three. No. That's Swanigan. a terrible possession. They, they, they made no effort to force a switch by Purdue or to get a good matchup. Standing around. Here you've got Edwards if you want on the block against Walton. There it is. That's what they want. Vincent Edwards elevates, missed it, got his own miss, and it stripped away. Irvin again. I think John Beeline wants a timeout. He needs a timeout because that last possession was not good. Two and a half to go. Tie game. It's been close the whole way. The Wolverines, the eight seed. Purdue, the one seed.
What if we could stream the best original series and premium networks with no annual contract or surprise fees? And what if we could watch them on our favorite? Oh, P.J. Thompson and Purdue, their hands full as the number one seed regular season champs against a team Michigan that has had an unbelievable week. A plane crash on their way here. Flew in yesterday morning, came straight to the gym, beat up on Illinois, trying to get another victory and advance to the semifinals. It's a heck of a storm. It really is. And the best part of it is nobody got hurt. The by far the best part. By far. The rest of it doesn't even matter. Not even a little. But now we're enjoying watching them play. Walton had it stripped away by Thompson. Good enough to win your championship, P.J. Thompson. Under recruited. Came when Ronnie Johnson decided to transfer. Matthias finally hit one. And it was a big one. That's what he does. It's who he is. Michigan, you don't need to match them three for three. You just need to get a good possession. They haven't had one in two times down the floor. The first basket of the game for Dakota Mathias. Robinson. Edwards went for the steal. Wilson fought him off and then made a great move to lay it in. Just two guys fighting for it. DJ Wilson won the fight. 25 for Wilson. Swanigan has been really quiet. Matthias missed the layup. How did he miss it? Made a great back cut. Point blank. You make the hierarchy contested three, and then you miss that one. Michigan. Got a bucket last time, but a bad possession. They need to get some movement going, get a matchup they like. This is the matchup right here they like. The senior, Zach Urban. On the way, spun out of there. Shot clock winding down. Step back. Nope. Wilson was there, couldn't grab it. Now Purdue. Edwards on the move. Edwards, what a step through. Scores. Matt figured out that with Metro PCS, he gets a 4G LTE. In Washington, D.C., let me show you the sequence right here. Look at the steal right there by P.J. Thompson, and it turned into the first buck of the day under pressure for Dakota Mathias. And then after a scramble, look at this. Two guys going at it, arms flying, and then an inside-out move to the rim for D.J. Wilson. And then after a great play by Carson Edwards, half the bench says, slow it down. Now, nah, we'll step through. Sweet. So here we go. Final half minute from Washington, D.C. Michigan, a great three-point shooting team. Only one of them since halftime. Wilson trying to take over. And almost a chance for a three-point play. Instead, he'll shoot two free throws. And just because they moved hard, it's the first time in about six possessions. Michigan has sprinted on their cuts. Wilson sprinted up, made Swanigan react, got by him, got fouled. That is four on Swan again. So DJ Wilson at the line. Excellent free throw shooter. These are huge. Wilson missed the first. That's big. Remember last year in this tournament, the 8-1 matchup, Michigan on a last second shot beat the one seed. Cam Indiana. Chapman. Cam Chapman, right corner. Trying to repeat that against the one seed. This time it's Purdue. But down three. Wilson got the friendly nice roll. Too. All right, now you bring in Xavier Simpson. Pick up defensively. Switch everything. I think you foul Matt. Look, you don't want to foul Matthias, but I think you trapped and you foul quick. 
Matthias running the baseline. That one was almost stolen away. Thompson got fouled by Abdul Rahman, who didn't oh, think man. he committed the foul. Yeah, and that I thought was a bad call by the ref. I don't think Abdul Rahman fouled him either. I thought he kind of went past him with an inside hand. Sometimes referees anticipate the call. All right, let's see. I mean, not much. The left hand, oh. I guess, brushed him a little bit. That was initiated. Looked to me like Thompson. But it does stop the clock, 18.6 to go. Robinson back in, Simpson out. We still got plenty of time if you go fast. Against Minnesota, Michigan was able to tie with a three, top of the key, D.J. Wilson. Thompson, excellent free throw shooter, missed it. Rebound, Wilson. Got go. Under 15, two-point deficit. Under 10. Urban to the basket. Urban ties the game. Oh. And it's stolen. No. No. They're going to look at the clock. They stopped it. The I don't clock know if it ran a few pence of a second. I, I don't know whether they called a timeout or they just stopped it because of the clock. All right, let's listen for the whistle. When does the whistle come? That was looking like a steal and maybe a game winner. Oh, man. oh man! It did come right before, I think, the pass left the hand. Matt Painter was in the timeout motion, but he was well behind the play, obviously. Produced players reacted as if there was not a timeout. I think they blew the whistle because they saw what I saw, which is a few tenths went off the clock. All right, so now we got to shift our focus because that that is not going to change. No. They stopped it. Yes. It's not a steal. It's going to be Purdue ball. They'll look at the clock. And we'll see if we can take another look. See Matt Painter right there. Asking for timeout, but only a split second before. So the clock did not stop. That's why the play was stopped. The officials helping us understand. They put some there time was, back on. There was no timeout. Right. They did not call the timeout. The clock running killed the play. And he, 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 man, and you can, the clock operator now, that's a big mistake oh. in a big spot, but you have to stop if you're the officials. Yeah, it's not the officials. I mean, you, you, deal. That, that should not happen, though. So here we go, 4.2 seconds to go, and this is the key. Purdue has plenty of time to get off a good look. Well, they've got a ton, and I would get the ball to Carson Edwards. He's the fastest guy going down the court. Michigan's going to get a timeout here. They've seen Purdue set up. So John Beeline takes a look and sees what's going on. I mean, Michigan was victimized against Northwestern wasn't that long ago. And there was a lot less time than there is now. But coming down the wire, only fitting between two teams that have been playing so well. We've had a game that's just been back and forth. Well, it's been an awesome game. I'm going to tell you, this is going to go against everything because everybody remembers Duke and Kentucky. Putting a guy on the ball out of bounds gets you beat. It just does. And I think Michigan, I know Michigan did that against Northwestern. It looked like they were going to do that with D.J. Wilson. In this circumstance, I would get the ball to Carson Edwards. I think Carson Edwards getting low. He can get anywhere he wants to get in 4.2 seconds, and he's on fire. He could get all the way to the basket. He can get all the way to the band back there in 4.2 seconds if he catches it. Now, if you're Michigan, here's what you have to do. You have to keep the ball out of the middle, Dave, and they have to make Purdue catch the ball coming back towards the inbounder. They cannot allow momentum to go towards their basket, or that 4.2 is a month. I'm getting the ball to Carson Edwards, that kid right there, the freshman. I mean, it didn't kill you to get the ball to Swanigan if you want to bring him up here, but, you know, see, John Beeline doesn't have anybody on the ball. They're going to play some center field here. Good move, I think. And that goes against all fans. Well, Matthias, the inbounder. Here's Edwards. Edwards, Purdue. Blocked by Wilson, and we're going to overtime. DJ Wilson has been tremendous.
We got to see. Watch Derek Walton get laid out here. Oh, you can't hardly see it. He got laid out by a screen by Biggie Swanigan right there. Derek Walton, you see, he's staggered. And DJ Wilson just came out and swatted it. Wow. Just a fitting end to regulation. Who would want five more minutes? We'll be back for overtime right after this. We're led to believe each individual point is worth the same amount, regardless of when it's scored. Layups are always worth two points, theoretically. But fans know that's not the case, because here, in the last minute, everything counts for just a little bit more. Under 30 seconds, three-pointers tend to feel like five. As for buzzer beaters, they're worth the whole shebang. Time presented by Continental Tire. This is a quarterfinal game in this Big Ten tournament from Washington, D.C. Dave Fleming, Dan Dockich, Molly McGrath, 66 66, the eight seed and the one seed, two very evenly matched teams. The last few seconds were chaos. This is the last play of regulation. Uh, Derek Walton got just drilled. A good setup by Matt Painter, but Michigan handled it really well. You know, the shame of this is really. Clock and the operator hurt Michigan a lot. I mean, you stop that clock, you're paid to do that. You stop that clock. That was a steal on the inbound. That Michigan's going to go lay it in, be up two in that situation. That's you got to play through a lot of things. You shouldn't have to play through that. Now, I guess uh, uh, to be fair, maybe you would say, who knows? Maybe the sequence could have been a little different if the clocks. I, who knows? We don't know, but. That mistake, mistake shouldn't have happened, and it really cost Michigan because it looked like they were going to have a, a miracle win yeah, with that steal. Bill Rockman turned around, got the ball, and who knows? Who knows? You got to play through it. Isaac Haas will start off the overtime on the floor for Purdue. Now, if you're at Michigan, you've got to get great movement and drive Swanigan here with the fouls. Wilson thought about the three. Bad Out. movement. Yeah, just sort of stagnated again. Wilson tried to pass it to Irvin. It goes out of bounds. Just a bad possession, and this has haunted Michigan this entire last 10 minutes. No movement. And when they've gotten movement, what have they done? They've gone to the basket and scored. You stay stagnant against Purdue, you got no shot. Too tough. 13 turnovers way above the season average for Michigan. Got to go to Swanigan here. Matthias got Walton in the air, then Walton avoided the foul. What body control, really? Because he looked like he was coming down right on the right side, or excuse me, left side. You don't even have to watch a possession to know whether Michigan's going to score or not. This is the matchup. Irvin, jumper, too strong. Duncan Robinson tracks down the loose ball. You can't go east and west against Purdue. I've said it. You've got to go north and south, get some spread, go north and south, and you can get something good. Offensive rebounds. I mean, that is Shocking. not a number you would have expected coming into this game. Not at all. Walton, catch, no. awkward shot off the rim. Bad shot. He was facing the other end and turned into it again. No movement, bad shot. So the first minute and a half, nobody scored here in overtime. Haas against Wilson, a runner, no. Michigan on the move. Abdur Rahman for three, short and way short, then it goes off of Haas, but right to Swanigan. And John Bieland really frustrated. That was, I don't think Abdur Rahman knew how far out he was. He kind of caught the ball. Offensive foul. Great play, Derek Walton. Red the freshman. That's it for Carson Edwards. Great play by Derek Wall. Carson Edwards has had a tremendous game. Carson Edwards has been, other than Haas, maybe the player of the game for Purdue, which we would not have thought coming into this with the player of the year candidate. Look at this. Reads it, moves his feet, shows his hands, charge. You know what I'm a little shocked by? What? I'm a little shocked that Ryan Klein is in this game as opposed to Spike Albrecht. I think they feel like Klein is doing a good job defensively, but Spike Albrecht has played really well when he's been in the game the same time with P.J. Thompson. 
and he just drilled his last three. And he's not obviously afraid of a big game in a big situation. Urban off the dribble, steps through, scores. That's a matchup they didn't mind either. Force Edwards to guard, goes north and south, not east or west. He had the bucket that tied it late in regulation. Now he's got the bucket that puts Michigan ahead with two and a half to go in overtime. Swanigan, catch, dribble, to the free throw line. Fourth foul on D.J. Wilson, who's been Michigan's best player. And now he's one away from being disqualified. Do you think this is accurate of the games we've done, and we've done a ton, this is the hardest game I've seen yet to officiate? I think so. This is just a hard game to officiate. A lot of 50-50 kind of calls. Yeah. A lot of physical play. You know, Michigan undersized, so they're fighting around. It's just a tough game. I think these officials have done a really good job. I'll get ripped for that, but I don't care. I think they've done a great job in a tough circumstance. One more to tie the game for Swanigan. No. Wilson knocked it out of bounds. Purdue ball. Man, that was Vincent Edwards. That was. That was no block out. You know, in that situation, Vince Edwards is a skinny kid. DJ Wilson just, I think, assumed that he was going to be able to go get the rebound. Didn't block out, didn't get the rebound. How about this one, producer? Made only two of their last eight free throws. Well, a good free throw shooting team, typically. Swan again. One bounce, tried to draw the call. That time off of Purdue. Well, we need the uh, Gophers and the Spartans to just hang on. We need some extra time here, our first quarterfinal game. 4-5 matchup is next. I've got some great stuff that Tom Izzo texted me today about that game. Really? Yeah, oh. Tom Izzo gave me a long text today about what they're going to do. Good tease. I'm ready. Maybe a half hour after this one is finished, whenever that happens. Irvin to the basket again. North and south. Now, if you're Michigan, you cannot foul here. I'll tell you why, Dave. Purdue has really struggled to find a good shot, so you don't bail them out with a foul. Irvin's got the last six. Two in regulation, four in overtime. Matthias, three short, loose ball, Derek Walton. And Matt Painter says no foul, straight up defense. Oh, there's a month here. We got a lot of action yet to... Now, again, though, if I'm Michigan, I got to go with some movement starting now. 15 seconds. This is a monster possession. Yeah, you can't be too passive. Right. Why not get the ball? You see what Purdue did? Yeah. They moved Matthias on him. And he played good defense. Irvin missed the three. And he settled because he knows Matthias is darn good. You better find the ball here. Edwards was thinking about it. Swanigan for three and the tie in and out. Walton fighting for it, but Purdue's got it. P.J. Thompson, what a play. Timeout, Matthias and the Boilermakers. P.J. Thompson made a great hustle play. I'm telling you, that kid wins the championship. Not wow. the flashiest, no. not the big numbers, but maybe if you're looking for, okay, Purdue fell short last year for their expectations. What's been the difference this year? What's made them a better team? Maybe it's that guy. I'm telling you it's that guy. Watch this play by this kid. The scramble is on. Derek Walton playing hard. Irvin in there. Walton's kind of having P.J. Thompson just gets a hand and bats it out of there. I'm telling you. Rachman, Abdul Rachman on this end, P.J. Thompson on this end, making plays that you just never see in a scorebook, but you can't win without it. Two teams that have big ideas for this tournament and for the next tournament. But whereas yesterday maybe was about the bubble teams and a resume win and whatnot, I mean, these kids right now, they are fighting for a chance for a Big Ten Tournament Championship. You said it. Yesterday's for bubble teams, today's for titles. All right, let's go through this. Uh, Swanigan had a great look at a three, had it halfway down. So that tells you he's okay to shoot. If you don't mind that, you can probably get it. But what you really want to do is, I think, I think you want to run whatever action you like. Maybe it's some curl action where you have both Klein, if he's in the game, which I assume he is, and Matthias, really putting pressure on the defense to come out. Then you set a ball screen and pop if you want to get Swan against something good. Or, you know what, 49 seconds, you just throw it into him. Hope you get a three-point play. Purdue hasn't made a shot from the floor in over 
time. Four plus minutes in. Now let me go the other way. Michigan, you want to switch everything. And if somebody has you whipped, you don't reach in. So many times you see Guy Beat reach in three-point play, tie game. Oh, they lost Watt. They lost him. For the tie, Matthias, and you can just tell, Walton comes away with it. Oh, my goodness. Out of the inbounds, I think it was Zach Irvin had no idea where Matthias was. Oh, man. And Purdue is playing him straight up, which means if Michigan scores here, they are in a great spot. Now, Purdue needs a stop if you're not going to stop. Screen spread it. Go against Warnigan. Here comes Wilson. And do it again. Walton now has the matchup, got a foul against Swan again. I don't know how you call it. I am sorry, I don't know how you possibly call it. Well, I agree with what you said. This has been a tough game to officiate, but 20 seconds to go overtime as hard as these teams have played. That's going to be what decides it? Man, I don't... I'm not mad at Matt Painter. Look at this. This is a nice ball screen. I told you they were going to go this route. There is no foul there. That's a kid moving his feet. You said it, 20 seconds to go. You're not calling that out, following the player of the year out. So now one of the best free throw shooters in the country goes to the line. What a story, Michigan. 20 seconds away from another win. Nobody, seriously, in the country, I think I'd rather have at the line than Derek Rowe. Honest to goodness, I've seen him do this for four years. Make big one after big one after big one. Maybe that's going to end up being the story it of the is. game. That difference at the line. You got to go. You know, honest to goodness, John Beeline sent Xavier Simpson to the scores table. As Walton was getting ready to shoot, Xavier Simpson sprinted off the bench. Like, I'm surprised Walton didn't see that out of the corner of his eye. Purdue needs a basket, and they need it fast. That one almost oh, stolen away. Flying for three. No. Rebound Simpson. He's fouled. Wow. And the Michigan fans can sense it. Truly, this is turning into the story of March. Unbelievable. It was just a couple days ago, getting ready to head to Washington, D.C. A legitimate, scary, serious plane crash where thankfully everybody turned out okay for the Wolverines. I mean, it was no good. And everybody lucky that they were okay. So they fly in yesterday morning, no jerseys, no shoes, no time, come straight to the gym, beat Illinois, and they're seven seconds away from beating the number one seed. But Simpson missed both free throws. Klein for three, it's got to go, it does! Oh 2.1 seconds. And a two-point game. This one is not over yet. Oh, man. Ryan Klein, it was a nice touch pass to him. He just lifted up and drilled it. You got to get it in now, and you can run the baseline. His first basket of the day. Man, oh, man. Good for him. So you're right. You have to get the ball in. If Michigan inbounds it cleanly, they're in good shape. They're going to check the time. When does it go through the net? Perfect. I think 2.1 was exactly right. All right. Now, if you're Purdue, you, your first choice is, do I put somebody on the ball? If you have a guy that you think can really anticipate, then you put him on the ball underneath. If you don't, then you go play five against four, switching everything, everything. If you're Michigan, you try to get Derek Walton as much room as possible. A lot of coaches will set something up in the middle and run Walton from half court, giving him room one on one. Doesn't look like they're going to do that. Looks like maybe either Walton or Abdul Rahman going to take it out and play two guys in the middle and two guys deep. Isaac Haas is going to harass the inbounder. Abdul Rahman trying to clear some room from the mountain of a man along the baseline. He can run. Who have And he got it into Robinson, who's fouled. A second ticks off, 1.1 to go, and you get an excellent free throw shooter at the line for a chance to ice it. Make two, you win. Make two, and it's over. Yep, make two, does everybody sit down? 
Just sit down. Just See, go, go inside. To go inside the other end and sit down. A guy who started his career Division Three Williams College has turned into a heck of a player in the Big Ten. They're going to make sure with the clock. Now they, they, these are important tenths of a second, so they want to make sure they got it right. You know, he was an All-American as a freshman. They missed a switch. See two guys right there, Matthias and Thompson, went with the same guy, Derek Walton. And that's a lack of communication. But to your point about Robinson, Robinson was All-American. His coach left Williams, and his coach, who had played for John Beeline, called John and said, look, this kid can really play. Came in, liked him, and a really good player for Michigan. So they will confirm 1.1 seconds left on the clock in overtime. Hey, if it's a three-point game, I'm guarding P.J. Thompson. He's showing he can hit him from way out. You're right. He's hit two half-court shots this year already, including one today. Double bonus, so two free throws. Got the first. Mm. It's a long way from Williams College. A long, long way. For a trip to the semifinals. Amazing. Sit down, Michigan, to get out of the way. Don't reach in. Thompson heaves. It doesn't matter. It's over in this great story of the Wolverines. Rolls on in Washington, D.C. I got to tell you, this is one of the most amazing things I've ever seen in basketball. A team that yesterday, two days ago, excuse me, has a plane crash, comes here, wins by 20. Next day, you think there might be a letdown. I don't know, but they came out and gutted out a tough win against one of the best teams in college basketball. I've never seen anyone like it. Now let's send it over to Molly McGrath. Thank you, Dave. DJ, a back and forth emotional game. What was your mentality in the overtime? Season. I think we had three overtime wins or uh, losses in the uh, Big Ten. Um, so we just tried to gut this one out, and we did. A difficult and eventful week, starting with a plane crash. What do these two wins say about the resiliency of your team? I think you said it. It shows that we're resilient. Uh, we embrace adversity well. And um, I don't know, Coach Beach did a great job with gathering us all together and just playing. Next up, it's either Minnesota or your in-state rival, Michigan State. Who would you rather see in the semifinal? I know we just, we all just blessed to be here, and um, I know we're going to try our hardest to get that win. All right, thank you, DJ. Appreciate it. And thank you, Molly. Wow, what a win for Michigan. We got to regroup. You, <laughs> you, you need a few minutes? No, let's play. Uh, let's play three today. This is awesome. DJ Wilson, great effort. Both ends, he had a battle two bigs all day long. And we expect another good one coming up next. It'll be Minnesota and Michigan State, 74 70 in overtime for Molly McGrath. Dan Dockage, Dave Fleming for now saying so long, but stick around. We're going to Brooklyn for basketball, college basketball live scoreboard right now. Guys, you got.